Here is the completed Murphy British radio. Here's the cabinet here. And this just required the usual repair job, new capacitors and replacing old wiring. We'll take a closer look at the cabinet uh, when we put it all back together. It's just a large Bakelite cabinet. It doesn't have an RF stage, it's just a regular five tube AM and shortwave radio. But it's really built with high quality and gives good performance. It doesn't have all that many capacitors in it, just a few paper capacitors and some electrolytics. It's got a good sized output transformer for good base response. Now let me see if I can turn it back over. Here's, here's also the modification I did to the gramophone input. Uh, being British, it calls this the gramophone uh, input rather than phonograph. But I put an American type phono jack on here and a capacitor to prevent high voltage from coming back into the device if there will be a short in a tube or to prevent DC from an external device from upsetting the bias on the uh, audio preamplifier tube. Let's see if I can turn it over here and we can take a look at the top of it. Let me sort of line it up here so it'll sit down on the desk. Here's the uh, RF, or I guess it doesn't really have an RF stage, but here are the, uh, the RF coils. It doesn't have an RF amplifier, just it has a converter tube mounted up on this little pedestal here. And these are British uh, Mazda valves. They use a, a, a British 8-pin uh, socket. It looks like it would be an American 9-pin tube. The bulb looks the same, but the socket is totally different. And I've also got a British Pi radio, which somebody took all the British tubes out of them, and the bases are completely different. I have no tubes that will substitute. So for the Pi radio, I'll have to order all new British tubes to go into the sockets. And there's the converter, the IF, and the detector tube. The output tube, I think, is a lot like an American 6V6. It's a... Uh, it's a Mazda 6P, 6P25. And this is a Mazda rectifier tube. I think it's a UU6. Let me, let me take it out here and we'll see if I can get it, get it to come out here. Yes, this is a Mazda UU6. And I think it's sort of like a 5 a 5V4. It's a it's a rectifier where the, uh, the it's got separate cathode sleeves but the cathode sleeves are connected to the filament so it's the schematic the circuit for it is like a 5Y3 would be with a separate filament winding but it's more like uh, like a 5AR4 or a 5V4 which has a separate cathode sleeve and I looked up the data on this, and the filament actually runs on 4 volts, I'm pretty sure. So there'd be no American substitute for it. If it ever went bad, I'd have to use silicon diodes or just buy an exact, see if I could find an exact replacement for these. And here's the filter choke. It's got an actual filter choke to it. It's got uh, multiple voltage selection here, because I think back in the 50s, even in, in Britain and on the continent of Europe, they would have different voltage, uh, different voltages. Now they're standardized at, I think, 2, 230 volts. But some places might have 250, some might have 110. So this enabled you to set up the voltage. And I don't think this was ever designed to be exported to the U.S., but fortunately for uh, us in the U.S., it has a 120 the 120 volt provision there. And I put a new power cord on it and a fuse. And I had to restring the dial cord. You want to use this really big dial pointer on there. And the dial pointer is actually missing. So I'm not, I, I guess it just won't have that, that functionality. But here's the, uh, I did restring it so that the tuning shaft will work and maybe I can rig up some kind of a pointer to go on there 
I've got the speaker output hooked up to the uh, got the speaker output hooked up. Let me see if I can plug in the uh, the aerial connection here. Let's see here. I think that's I think that's it. And I'll plug it in here. I plug in the got the new power cord on it. The dial lamp doesn't work. It's it's got a bayonet base, kind of like a I think like on a vacuum cleaner a vacuum cleaner lamp. So I have to try to see if I can get a replacement for it. Here are the inputs. It's got gramophone. This control controls volume or controls tone and mode and power. So the gramophone inputs are G1, G2, and G3, ranging from minimum treble to maximum treble. And then the radio inputs are R1, R2, and R3. So I hear a little bit of noise. Let's Let's see here. Medium is medium wave, which is American AM uh, broadcast band, and then the others are for short waves. All sorts of helpful advice. Well, I download it onto my computer, and then I can just pop it on, listen to it, and it makes me feel like I know what's going on. PCs and Macs left. I don't have a very good antenna on this. Let me see if I can hook up the antenna lead to a, we'll hook it up to a, an, another piece of wire. tell you, from the standpoint of the fans, I don't know that it's going to jump out and that you're going to notice anything necessarily right Here's away. Here's the tone control. Um, you know, in most cases, other than Ed Hockley, you know, how minimum treble to maximum. Necessarily recognize and know and, and really even take note of, but I do think it sends an interesting... does not compromise player safety. Listen very carefully to the commissioner's answer. We've been working with you. So we're getting pretty good performance from it. I'll now put it back into the cabinet and we can demonstrate the auxiliary input there as well.